Oh, how I have missed my garden and I have so much to do. So if you saw Thursday's video, I kind of got a little bit stranded. I spent longer than expected, longer than planned away from the garden. And now we have to have a big tidy and bring it back to life. I filmed a couple of clips before I went away. So how long have I been away from the garden? I think it's been about 10 days. So it's actually been grand because one, I had my neighbor who was a plant enthusiast um, keep an eye on everything. It rained while I was away. I did, uh, I'm sorry to the Irish people because before I went away, I was like, no God, the supper of rain while I'm away, be grand. It's actually still been raining. I'm gonna insert the footage of what I did to prep the plants before going away for a couple of days. And then we are going to have a nice tidy up. Just need to cut the grass and tidy up. Some of the things are on the turn, so I need to cut back my dead alliums. I'm gonna prep one of the raised beds. I have a lot of deadheading to do, but loads of dahlias have started to open and I feel like the garden is at that turn. Gap of late summer. I know you say late summer, but to me, July is like peak summer. But I'm noticing, you know, the hydrangeas are starting to kind of be the main like show, the dahlias. Um, and I still have like foliage and everything, but I definitely feel a little change in the air. Oh, my greenhouse is dirty as well, I need to clean the window. Anyway, let's have my dungarees on. I've got these down the French market. Let's get mucky. Let's get into it. It is that time of summer where I leave the garden and I pray Mother Nature looks after it. I have some gadgets, thankfully. The weather is on the cooler side for summer. It's not scorching hot. The sun's just after coming out, but it has been rainy all week. Yesterday it rained, drizzled for kind of most of the day. So my plants have had a pre-soak, which is great. And I got these gadgets. I got these, I've just seen them in the shop. They're one of those like JML things. Should ever go into like the DIY shop and they have like their ads playing. Um, I don't know if they work, we'll give them a bash. I'm only going away for a few days, um, I think six days. So your garden is generally grand for a week. It's just the likes of pots and stuff that can dry up quicker in the heat of summer. I've checked the weather forecast and Ireland is only going to be like late teens, early 20s for the next couple of days. It actually gets hot when I come back. Grand, love when that happens. These things, watering cones, you put them on top of bottles. There's a picture on the back actually. So we get a drinking bottle, we stick the little cone thing on and then we stick the cone into our basket or I don't have any hanging baskets because they always dry up and I forget to water them, um, but pots. So the likes of the barrels out the front, I'm gonna test these out and see if they work. Another thing I seen on the internet was, and I just kept a milk carton so he can try it. I seen a lad with a plastic bottle, like a drinking bottle. He cut a hole in the bottom, like drilled a little hole, and he put a Q-tip into the container, or sorry, poking out of the container. That Q-tip then dribbled the water out, and it was like a little drip irrigation system. So I think I might try this because the likes of the Cosmos and the Zinnias, um, they might dry out quicker. And then the other lads all stick in pots. Probably should have gotten two things, but I don't have the bottles for them. And um, I had to ask for a couple of like bottles because I just drink tap water. <laughs> so yeah, we will give these a bash. Picked these up, I think in Woody's when I was coming out the door, but I'm sure if you search online, they're just all watering cones. You'll probably pick them up cheaper. I think these were seven or eight euro. You might even get them cheaper. Um, I'm also gonna go out and I'm gonna deadhead everything. So before I water in the evening and give everything a big soak, I'm going out now and I'm going to deadhead. And normally I hate cutting loads of flowers, like, and not enjoying them in the house. So my pals are actually staying in the house, so if I do pick any nice cut flowers, I will leave them in the kitchen so that they can enjoy them. Um, so yeah, let's prep the garden for leaving it. When it comes to watering and prioritizing water in the garden, 
I always prioritize. So firstly, seedlings. So if you are growing anything at the time, if it's in the greenhouse, if you have any veg plugs, things like that, I prioritize water and make sure that they have enough. Then I go on to pots and hanging baskets. I don't have hanging baskets for the reason that I can't reach them, I forget about them and they dry out. But I do have lots of pots and I try to have big pots because the bigger the pot, the more water it can retain and it's not gonna dry out as quick as a smaller pot. So smaller pots get priority and then the bigger pots, they can naturally store some water. And then I prioritize water then for any young plants. So. I made a mistake last year and I planted perennials in the height of summer when the garden was going through a dry spell and it was a nightmare. So basically when a plant is young and it's freshly planted, it needs time for the roots to establish. So the plants that I planted last year that got a little bit of a beating um, from the drought, they are much stronger this year because the roots um, have grown the roots are stronger and they have sought out the water so they're not how would you say they're showing less signs of stress from dehydration this year but granted it is definitely cooler this year compared to last year we did have a dry spell of about two weeks back in may but the rain has returned so irish <laughs> Typical Irish weather seems to be restored, although it's a little bit on the warm side, it's not as bad as what it was last year. And then I prioritize watering things like hydrangeas, so they naturally want more water, so I make sure that they have a good drink. But anything that's in the borders, I find that they will last a good week without watering. And to be honest, this year, I only watered when we had that dry spell um the for the borders and everything was fine so once there has been you know a bit of rain like it's grand it's only really the pots that I have to give an extra bit of water I try to pick plants that will kind of look after themselves with mother nature um I try not to have anything that is too needy because yeah if if a plant is too needy it's not going to do well in my garden so back to the garden present day and i have to say the garden did well without me mother nature she had my back while i was gone and also my neighbor who was throwing an eye and um, he said he didn't really have to do too much he just watered any of the pelagoniums in the greenhouse but everything else was kind of fine because we did have a fair amount of just natural rain so yeah the watering hose wasn't out I leave a patch of grass in my front garden to kind of just go a bit wildy so instead of no mow may I I'm probably like no mow summer on this patch but I do just mow around the edges of it so that it makes it look a little bit tidy just so people don't think I've just neglected the front and I wasn't arsed to cut the grass. So I think, well, the magpie is given out. I think rain is on the way, but I just tidied, I just cut the sides of this and um, because in this grass there is loads of, is that like clover? Loads of weeds basically, but I did see that there was bees going through it. So I just cut around it to make it look like I am purposely leaving it unmowed. So yeah, that's my little wild patch in the front. I do have another little patch here, but I cut this one just to make it look a bit tidy. And this border is doing so well. I do have a lot of deadheading to do, but um, catmint is looking a bit better bit of height with the roses I need to do some deadheading some more roses over here and then I have a lovely red one that one I remember I got that in little I think it was little or Aldi about 10 years ago when I moved in and every year I just cut it back but it's got lovely like red blossoms and the wall climbers doing well I remember I got this as a cutting from a friend years ago um and yeah doing well also that's the type of allium there that has the bee on it it's one of my faves i don't know the variety but i can have a look through my stash because i think i kept the card off that one but i think all of the grass is done i just need to sweep and tidy and then i need to do a good amount of deadheading i'm also not sure how i feel about the bottles so 
I think my soil is too free draining because when I filled the bottle, I feel like it was emptied into the soil by that evening. I thought it was going to be a bit more of a slow release. What I might do is though, I might cut the bottom off so that rain can just get in and go down. I like the idea, but it watered them too quick for me. This has done really well. This is Bacopa, a water hyssop, and I have it in this bucket as like the spiller. And yeah, it's done, done quite well. There's also strawberries in here, but I think, I do think Miss Magpie, Mr. and Mrs. Magpie, or not Magpie, Blackbird. I think they have gotten them all. Appalachian sunrise meets my skin. Even with my eyes still closed, I can feel it coming. Golden, golden, I'll call it home. Golden, 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 golden things. in spring rainbow trout and hummingbird wing golden I'll follow the golden 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 things so I had left a load of kale uh, go to seed but I'm going to take it away now because I want to get some ventilation in at the dahlias because they've all grown up and most of the um, flowers have gone. So the bees have pretty much gotten their, their feed for them. So yeah, I'm going to pull them up and then that will free up some space for the dahlias because yeah, there's been a lot of rain so they need a bit of ventilation. <laughs> So most of you probably already know this, but if you're deadheading your dahlias, here's a good example. This one is round, like a button, and this is yet to flower. And then this one is more like a cone shape, and this one can be deadheaded. So I actually have a couple on this one. So this one and this one is about to open and it's a flower, but when it's more like a cone, it is, yeah, needs to be deadheaded. So the sun has come out from my next job, which is a dirty one. So when this tree was in flower, can you see the dirt on the glass? So. I think all of the rain and then the petals from when the tree was flowering doesn't actually look too bad on screen but it is filthy you can see the rain marks on it there so the ladder is out I have a warm bucket of soapy water although don't tell my window cleaner because he's like don't use water it leaves white marks it leaves lime scale but um there's no sign of my window cleaner to ask him to, to wipe down my greenhouse. But I'm just going to use soapy water and then I might wipe it down with a bit of vinegar then as well.
skin. You see the difference between one and two. Oh my God, it seems to just be this side as well. The other side isn't too bad, but I will give it a wipe down as well. But that is so satisfying. Okay, that is one job off my list. I feel like there is a lot of jobs to do in the garden at the moment. Um, I just thought I'd share a couple of things that are still doing well. This geranium, this was two, two tiny plants. And look at it, it's a bit of a bit of a thug in this area. But I like it for the minute and I still have the patch of grass. Something I've noticed though in, in this border is I'm gonna have to, thin out I think on a few things because I don't know if you can see we have had a lot of rain but there's powdery kind of mildew on some of the plants and this has happened in the past week so that's generally lack of ventilation and the moisture is getting trapped which is not good because we don't want to have kind of mold spores we want the plant to be happy and it can kind of attract disease so I think the fennel that self-seeded while it looks pretty and it's nice I think I'm gonna have to pull it out I do have fennel in a pot so it's not too bad but I think I may have to pull it out just to allow some airflow I've also noticed that there is a mint that self-seeded I'm gonna pull that out and there's also this can you see this white verbena this was absolutely stunning last year and there was three bits of it but it is not happy this year and i think it's because there's not enough space um some mint has snuck in so i'm going to pull out the mint and see if i can rescue the verbena because it's the verbena that i originally put in and it's the verbena that i want but there's definitely not enough air getting in here and I think it could be because of our big friend fennel yeah so that could be a job that could be a job for a few days well it looks pretty the fennel is really nice and I think it'll also look nice in winter but I don't want to kill off any other plants trying to keep that so just something I've noticed could have be just because we had a lot of rain as well and um, especially like in spring there was a bit of black spot on some of the roses because we had so much rain so sometimes it'll sort itself out but that is something I'd like to get on top of also have you too got some lettuce bolting <laughs> the size of that lettuce is about to go over the wall that was a good day's job in the garden I have twigs I'm getting up in the greenhouse. Well, it's a good day when you have twigs in the hay. Oh, here's Mr. Blackbird. Um, I just also want to let you guys know 
I picked a winner of our secret giveaway. But leave your book emojis. Oh, I'll wait for that airplane to pass. Leave the book emojis on that Instagram post. And when I get a few copies um, of my book off my publisher, um, I'll actually reach out and see if I can get some for like Christmas time or just later in the year. Um, leave the little book emojis there and then I can randomly just select people. And again, like I said, it'll only be my Instagram account that sends you a message with the verified tick. I won't send you a Telegram or a Twitter or a thread or a whatever app there is. Literally that Instagram page with the verified tick where you have left the book emoji. And I'll select that random just throughout the year whenever I have some books and I will just do secret giveaways. For that one where I had Joanne's book and my book, I have picked a winner for that and I'm about to message them. Now I'm about to also go in and have a shower. <laughs> I love when I get into the shower after I've been in the garden because the floor does be covered in like grass seed, petals, but I don't know what else in there. Anyway, I'll see you in Thursday's video. Thursday's video coming is part two of a vlog from France. And then, yes, I'll be back in the garden. I think I have an idea of somewhere cute that I want to visit as well. But sure luck. I'll see you in the next one. Things. Golden. Wildflower, only golden.